That is against the whole Christian message. All the prophets screamed about this. Stop creating God in your image. I'll forgive you. I'm merciful. Christianity, someone had to die for your sins. Human sacrifice? That's the worst idea in the world. That's the mother load of bad ideas. Human sacrifice? There's no mercy in Christianity. You go, what are you talking about, Rabbi? The God of Christianity has no mercy at all. He just accepts a payment from someone else. Yes. How could the Christians claim they believe Tanakh and every word of it, and also believe that Yashka is Messiah, and also believe that Yashka is the Son of God with no father, if we know clearly from Tanakh that Mashiach has been David? Christianity is not powerful because they believe in Tanakh. Christianity is powerful, and it's the most, it's the largest religion in the world because it exploits man's greatest ailment, low self-esteem. See, people struggle with the low self-esteem. People feel bad. They look in the mirror, they don't go, oh, terrific. They look in the mirror and they see someone that, who's not attractive. People think about their own worst. So Christianity affirms it. Christianity says, you know why you're a sinner? You know why you're a bad person? Instead of what is in the Haftarah on a fast day, that seek Hashem, you created in the image of God, God will forgive you. It affirms every lousy thing you think about yourself and say, you are a sinner, you are worthless. There's nothing you could do to achieve your, and therefore give up. And there's a guy who's much more handsome than you'll ever be. He's perfect. You ever see what he looks like? Doesn't look like a Jew, looks like a Viking, right? <laughs> There's a guy, he's six feet tall, perfect hair, perfect outfit, perfect everything. Christianity is man's failed effort to create God in his image. Judaism is the exact opposite. It's God's successful effort to create man in his image, exactly the opposite. They're not similar. They're, one is against the other. Christianity is you can't do it. You're a sinner, you're lost, and it's because you're infected with the original sin, and they will accept the guy who's much better than you'll ever be. Listen, listen, sweetheart. Isaiah 55, seek the Lord when he is found, call out to him when he is near. What do you mean? Why do you have to seek the Lord when you find him? It's a simple pasuk. Seek the Lord when he's found, when you find him, you don't have to look for anybody, he's here. Call out to him, scream out to him when he's near. When he's near, you don't scream. Why don't people do tshuva? If, if tshuva is so accessible, if God would forgive you if you only turn back, then why don't people just do tshuva? The reason is that people deep down think that God will never forgive me. Rabbi, nice speech, but the truth is you don't know some of the things I've done in my life that I am so ashamed of, and God knows them. He'll never forgive me. I'll do the fasting on Union Kippur. Basically, I don't think he's going to ever forgive me. And when I die, when I'm 120, wow, I'm go I know exactly where I'm not going. Okay, so then why do we think that God would never forgive me? This is why Christianity is so successful. Because we think that I've not forgiven my sister for what she did to me, my brother, my father. So they vote, I don't forgive other people. I create God in my image and I assume that God will never forgive me. You understand? And that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, very, if the sinful person will turn away from his sinful ways, I will freely forgive him. Ah, but I don't forgive other people. Why would you ever forgive me? Hashem says, no, because my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher. It's such a delicious pasuk. It's so, it's so delicious. Next time you hear this after you, I'm just going to cry. Hashem says, I know you haven't forgiven those. Have you been hurt in your life? Yeah. And I'll bet you there are people that you probably haven't forgiven yet. They betrayed you. It's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling someone betrays you. And so we can't forgive. And we do is we then create God in our image. It's so Christian. We then assume that God is behaving like us because we haven't forgiven those who've betrayed us. We then impose that onto God and say, God, you'll never forgive me. And God says, what are you doing to me? My ways are higher than your ways. I will forgive you. Just turn to me. Do you think the rain will return back to the heavens before it satiates the ground and, and makes things grow? That's a delicious after. If you lose the after properly, you go flying. That is against the whole Christian message. All the prophets screamed about this. Stop creating God in your image. I'll forgive you. I'm merciful. Christianity, someone had to die for your sins. Human sacrifice? That's the worst idea in the world. That's the mother load of bad ideas. Human sacrifice? There's no mercy in Christianity. You go, what are you talking about, Rabbi? 
in Christianity, a person stands before the judge and the judge says, you're guilty. You have to pay a $100,000 fine or you're going to prison. And what happens is the guy in the back of the courtroom who, who's rich and likes you for some reason says to your attorney, I'll pay the $100,000 fine. So the judge goes, all right, I'll accept it. I don't care who pays it, someone pays it, right? What, is, what does it mean to be a Jew? What is the message of the Torah? You stand before the judge. The judge says you're guilty. $100,000, you're going to prison. And you realize not only don't you have $100,000, but you realize what a terrible thing you did. And you begin to cry with a broken heart, like David Amalek in front of the prophet Nathan. You just cry and say, I sinned. I did a terrible thing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees your heart, and he says, I'll forgive you. Go home. Don't do it again. Who's merciful? Only the God of Israel, the God of Christianity, has no mercy at all. He just accepts a payment from someone else. It's the worst idea in the world. That's why human sacrifice is utterly forbidden in Tanakh. So that's what sees the mind and imagination of a Christian. It exploits man's worst behavior, and that's low self-esteem. The worst decisions that you'll ever make in your life is when you think I'm worthless. Oh yeah, I might as well marry her because who else is going to marry me? And then you got it, you're in trouble. That, that's how it happens. When your self-esteem is way down here, you'll make the worst decisions of your life. If you were having a thought like that, to agree to a shidduch that you have a lot of problems, that you have, oh, I need help. Well, you, that's why when you speak to people who become Christians, they tell you stories. I was a drug addict, I was high, I was drunk, and then I accepted Jesus. You never heard of someone say, yes, come tell me, why did you convert to Judaism? Let me tell you what happened. I was stoned out of my mind. <laughs> I was laying on the streets of 42nd Street with half my clothes I disappeared, and I was vomiting, and I found Moses. I know you never heard such a thing, why? Because all the people who convert to Judaism, or become an Enoch, will tell you that I was in a great part of my life. I was strong, and that's when I found the Torah. The weakest places, that's where you find Christianity. That's where people find the church. That's what's going on. Not that Christians are going through Tanakh, and the Chayk of Edoir, that's not what's going on. They say these things, they will say, I believe in Tanakh. They will say that we're monotheists. They'll, they'll say all these things. They'll say God is love and mercy. They're misappropriating the truth. Only the God of Israel is merciful. Only the God of Israel is merciful. All these other pagan religions, it's completely transactional. You give God this, in exchange he gives you that. <laughs> בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחפצו כל אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו אם לא כנועה, והוא האי 